Ajay Sani, who is a counter-terrorism expert uh, and the executive director of the Institute of Conflict Management, uh, which also maintains the South Asia Terrorism Portal. Um, Ajay sir, thank you so much uh, for taking out your time and uh, uh, thank you for uh, talk about this extremely serious issue. And uh, sir, before we go into the larger problem with Jammu region at the moment, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the Yasi attack on the bus? Because um, a de- such a deadly attack in Jammu seems that to on 10 civilians uh, seems to be quite unprecedented. Um, there appear to be reports of new sophisticated weapons and mercenaries being foreign and trained. You see, the idea that this is somehow novel is something that is built into the way we approach this issue. Our memories are very short. Uh, if you go to the peak of terrorism, these were very deeply, the Jammu region was also very heavily affected by terrorism for more than a decade and a half, almost two decades. It is only after 2006 7 that we see that increasing control was established over Jammu and comparatively lesser control, but far improving control was also established over the valley. Now, it is you, you must understand that it is also a measure of our sh- successes that uh, nine fatalities in a single incident or 11 fatalities in this uh, uh, succession of four incidents that you are speaking of uh, is regarded as an extraordinary event. Let me just go back to 2001. 4,021 people were killed in just one year. That averages out to 11 people a day. So when you start talking about escalation, we are back into the uh, uh, 1990s or things are going out of control, you must understand terrorism continues in Jammu and Kashmir. It is foreign backed. It is foreign based. Today we have almost eliminated local recruitment, almost. There are still locals who are being recruited. Most locals are being recruited as facilitators now. Less as primary uh, primary attackers. Tremendous gains have been made. We have to have a sense of proportion in what we are talking about. When we say there is an escalation or there is a surge in terrorism, we must understand a surge compared to what? If nobody died yesterday and one person died today, that means it's an infinite surge. Mathematically, that's infinite. If one person died yesterday and two people died today, that's a 100% increase in uh, uh, terrorism. You have to use data as as it is meant to be used. I'll just give you one more uh, datum over here. Uh, They have been between the beginning of this year and uh, I think my data is still June 13th uh, that I have gathered. We have had 32 fatalities in Jammu and Kashmir. Last year, the same period, we had 39 fatalities in this year. Where is the surge? Why are we so agitated about it? All fatalities of this nature, all deaths are tragic. That is not to be denied. But if you are looking at it from a strategic point of view, if you are looking at it from a security perspective, then your assessments need to balance out in the larger context of what has happened in this region, what used to happen in this region, and even recent history as to how do we compare today with last year. The Jammu region has seen a surge in violence in the last two years. Of the 30 Indian Army soldiers killed in counter-terrorist operations in JNK in 2023, 21 of those 30 occurred in the Jammu region in the last two years. Uh, Let me just uh, uh, sort of take you to the, uh, you know, uh, idea of what is called the security dilemma. The security dilemma is that the most successful security forces or a security apparatus is the less you invest in it. Okay. So if you succeed in Jammu and you may have heard over the last years calls again and again for people call the army out get all why are why is the military force over there etc etc dilute force get, why are there so many central paramilitary forces uh, in jammu peace has been achieved and there is a dilution of presence over the years in jammu because we were so successful in jammu so peace has been achieved now let's go all go home 
so there was a thinning out of security forces the other thing you must understand is that there is a no a, a, a squeeze on going kashmir has been brought almost under a sub, uh, condition today the the valley that it is very difficult to mount to a very significant operation so the adversary the enemy has not given up these are processes of continuous adaptation so they see that all right it's becoming more and more difficult to operate in the valley there are openings across the border in the jammu region in terms of terrain it is a region where it is not difficult to operate comparatively speaking so you adapt your te- uh, uh, tactics and this is not the first time tactics have been adapted you have had variations movement from jammu to kashmir from kashmir back to jammu movement from urban area uh, uh, urban attacks to rural areas rural to urban this is an ongoing conflict and as you strengthen the adversary will shift this is one of those shifts to think of it as something unprecedented or something is just to forget the entire history of jammu and kashmir there was a time when the entire state excluding ladakh the entire state was affected every district of jammu was affected. is there some area uh, of counter terrorism or military operations where the indian government has gone wrong in the past 2 3 years would you say since you are a counter terrorism expert would you advise the government to do something different than what they are doing right now as far as counter insurgency is concerned or counter terrorism is concerned this government is doing precisely what preceding governments have done in terms of political action they have done a great deal that is harmful you have alienated a population you have dismantled the entire political process in the state you have tried to create false proxies of the center you have failed unless you have a political process or unless you talk foolishly like some of these people have been talking uh, there is this minister uh, athavale newly sworn in in this cabinet who says we have to go to war with pakistan and uh, take back uh, be okay this is the kind of nonsense that is being propagated it shows no awareness of the situation on the ground it shows no awareness of the balance of power in this wider region it shows no awareness of what is going on between pakistan and china of what india's economic and military capacities actually are so as far as counter terrorism is concerned and as far as kashmir terrorism is concerned in general let me be very clear it is not policy that has achieved anything it is the security forces the entire achievement is security force achievement swinging from talks to no talks that is what the earlier government that was policy let us talk to the terrorists let us talk to pakistan let us not talk to terrorists let us not talk to pakistan this government's policy is we will not talk to anyone that's policy now come back to counter terrorism the security forces have been doing their jobs in the past they are doing their job now with greater and greater effectiveness first as they learn more and more as their grid strengthen as they are better equipped and empowered and as pakistan weakens those are the essential bases of success in jammu and kashmir do you think there is any connection between the attacks and the uh, impending elections because these are elections that have been held after so long finally there is some revival of some sense of democracy in jnk but now we are starting to see this revival in attacks in jammu is there any connection there or is that a baseless theory first of all let me go back to my numbers and tell you there is no revival of attacks there is a continuation of attacks okay number 2 anyone who is trying to use these attacks as an excuse to postpone elections is either a complete coward or he has no understanding of history or he's an opportunist who doesn't want to have a electoral process over there 
because he wants to consolidate the center's hold on Kashmir and doesn't want to have an elected assembly over there because they have failed to create a proxy party over there where they would win and then therefore rule by proxy from Delhi. Let me also remind you that elections were held in 1996, a year in which more than 2,900 people were killed in that state. Elections were held in 2002, a year in which more than almost 3,100 people were killed in the in Jammu and Kashmir. So to tell me that, oh, we can't hold elections because six pe nine, uh, nine people were killed in uh, Riyasi is utter and complete. I, I don't know the word that is appropriate to be used here. These are liars, opportunists, falsifiers, or they are complete cowards. The next few months are going to be crucial, especially because of the elections. Where do you see this situation going, if you just have any concluding thoughts? We've just had an election in Jammu and Kashmir. What happened? Look, occasional incidents will continue to happen. We cannot escape that. Some of these incidents may have high fatalities. But that does not mean that the security forces are losing control. These are incidents of opportunity. I don't see any sustained deterioration. I see a progressive. You see, as you mentioned, new weapon systems, or at least not new, they've been there earlier also. But they are more and more, for instance, using uh, scope mounted rifles. So they can pick people off from a relatively better distance. The areas they are operating from give a distinctive advantage for ambush. There will be adaptations on the part of the security forces. They are the ones whose lives are on the line, by the way, not people sitting in Delhi and commenting on it, including me. Okay, so they will adapt. It will take a little time. It's not easy, but soon they will begin to develop grids, deployments, tactics which will make it more and more difficult for the adversary to be able to engineer such incidents. Does that mean the incidents will disappear? You know, I mean, this whole nonsense that they keep talking about zero terrorism, zero terrorism, that is a that, that that's a political slogan. OK, it's not a strategy. It's not a strategy. You cannot have zero terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. Unless Pakistan gives. Up. OK, because there will always be the possibility of infiltrating one man across the border and engineering one incident then the man dies and people are willing to die whether it is for belief whether it is for money for their families and whoever their survivors but people are willing to die so you will always get one or two people to do that so you will continue to have these incidents as long as pakistan continues to support this movement but please understand that this is a movement that is being it's an artificial support it is a dying movement and it is dying because Indian security forces have succeeded on the ground. We have defeated foreign backed terrorism in this country in the past. We have done it in Punjab, we have done it in Tripura and we have weakened and destroyed many other movements which were being supported from the outside. And we will defeat this movement as well. This movement is already more or less defeated. Now is the time if you really want to know what needs to be done. The security forces are doing their job. The failures are political. We need to revive political processes in Jammu and Kashmir. We need to feel that the people who are willing to go along with the Indian state feel increasingly that they are not being treated as enemies, outsiders, invaders, or whatever you want to call them. If you don't give another a people a sense of belonging, then you cannot complain that these people don't think they don't belong. There. OK, you are creating a polarized political discourse. And then you complain that the other side does not meet you halfway. So we have to tone down this polarization. We have to revive the political processes. We have to give the Kashmiri people a legitimate voice, a legitimate voice. That does not mean appeasement. 
that means a place within the democratic framework which is their right as it is your right and mine ajay sir thank you so so much uh, for taking out your valuable time i hope uh, uh, our, our viewers get to see this full interview to bust some myths uh, about continuity and revival uh, as you very rightly emphasized and pointed out um, thank you sir thank you <laughs>